And then LB, make me co-host, okay? Okay. Make me co-host so I can see everybody. My co-host yet? Alvi? Yes. I am? Okay, great. All right, super. All right, let's let him in. <clears throat> so make sure we mute everybody coming in. All right. Happy Tuesday. Make sure you guys mute coming in. You guys are probably muted as you do come in, but uh, boy, it's going to uh, be a fun one today, Eric, because we really haven't talked much about the back inside of what we're going to talk about today, which I, you know, we just came from, a, we were just in a, um, an event this past weekend where we spoke and we were talking, and it was more note bias than it was real estate bias, right? So, you know, a whole different mindset of the people that are in the room that are, you know, that see the true value in the mortgage notes, right? And we're going to go into, I'm going to share some slides and some data here in a minute, but you know, we'll get into that as we, as we go along, but I mean, it was pretty, I was yeah, pretty we're, with, we're with some really seasoned, seasoned note investors, note buyers, right? So as we talk about bringing the, bringing the real estate group to the note group and what exactly they're looking for, why they're looking for it, how to structure it. And people were blown away by Nick and I were keynote speakers at the event and they love, because the hardest thing to do I mean, if you want to fix, be a fix and flipper, fix and flip, uh, note flipper, basically buying non-performing assets, it's a job. It's a crazy job. And I will tell you, I know because I have both. I have a note that I've created four and a half years ago, and I can promise you, I'm getting, I'm actually the, the borrower's paying off, which is fine. I made a crap load of money. And, um, and I can promise you if I go into my, my debits and credits, um, the only uh, uh, debit I sent out was the money to buy it, <laughs> and the credits were all all profit. I had no expenses on this this property for almost five years, and I had pure profit. So uh, I wanted to um, uh, talk. I, I was listening to some, one of my really good buddies uh, uh, this morning when I was working out, <laughs> and he said something that was really cool. He goes, "The rich uh, rich is when your cash starts making baby cashers." <laughs> baby cashes. <laughs> so when you're rich, your cash makes baby cashes. I was like, what a great quote. I'm like, I'm going to like. Oops. Hang on, Eric. I just unmuted myself. I did I mute myself. I did because people, yeah, guys, when you come in in the room, please make sure you mute yourselves. I'm not sure why I'm hearing background noise, babies yapping, which is cool. Just not for now, because there's a lot of we don't have a lot of time on this and we want to make sure we get right to the good stuff because to what Eric, to your point, what you're saying um, is that with this group, and that's why this call is so important today. We can, there's not, we can sell and buy all these notes that we're teaching how to create in a matter of days, not weeks, not months, not years, days. If they just follow the recipe, don't screw with the recipe. Okay. You screw with the recipe, you're going to get, you decide to put salt instead of sugar into your chocolate chip cookies you're making. You screw up that one little thing, even though they both look the same, I can promise you, you're going to have a crap product, right? No different with notes. And we reiterate this over and over and over again, follow the protocol, follow what we tell you guys to do. And it's for your own good, good or don't do it at all. I mean, you would be better, my opinion, you would be better off not creating a note and doing it wrong you'd be better off not creating it if you're going to do it wrong would you agree eric well 100 i mean we have people that send us notes to buy and they 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 don't underwrite the borrower they didn't do any underwriting they wrote they wrote the note for too low of interest rate and they basically hose them on the deal now unfortunately for us we know what we're looking for so we'll go in and buy that deal and still make great money on it right but that's but that's not what we teach like we teach for people to actually go do it correctly on the front end so they can provide, you know, home ownership for, for the non-bankable borrowers of the world. And I can promise you, I just talked to someone today, they went and put a flip on the market. They typically will get multiple offers on. And guess what they didn't have? They didn't have offers. 
They didn't have offers. They had to take a discount. Well, wait a minute. If they know, we know. There's there's more people out there that want that house that's a fully renovated house. They'll probably put 15% down and pay a, a premium in payment in order to have home ownership for their family, right? So that's our goal. Nick and I's goal is to literally this year help a thousand homeowners have home, have home ownership. And typically those borrowers are not going to have traditional, don't, aren't going to get traditional bank financing. And in order for us to help a thousand homeowners do that is to help share our, our model with you guys. So you guys can go out and do it through us, you know, or with us or create the notes that we can help buy and that we can buy. So that's, that's the whole point of this, this deal. Yeah. So I'm looking for the, uh, I don't know where it went. I had it on my screen. I have to go figure out where I put it. Now I just, I was going to go through the, the PowerPoint that I have built up. I wonder if I could switch uh, over, but yeah, let's talk. I think it's the important part of all this, Eric, is that we, and I'll start talking about it from the very beginning. Uh, um, the, the seller finance market. Okay. And I don't know why my presentation is not, is it over here? I'm on a two, I'm trying to run two systems here and I don't know where or when I might have to. We got Facebook it. Live, we have Zoom, we have YouTube. It's, I don't think we're on Instagram today, but I want to be. Maybe, maybe next time, but we'll, maybe we'll do that <laughs> next time. But yeah, so the key to this whole thing, in my opinion, is if you're going to play in this space, you need to be able to do it the right way. I mean, I can't emphasize it enough. I get a lot of people that send us stuff over. They go through the master class, right? Um, if you haven't, if guys, if you haven't seen the, and you put this in the chat, Eric, if you haven't seen the new video that we did, go watch it and learn all this. Cause we're not going to get into the weeds on this uh, today um, on what it looks like, but go into and uh, what is, what is it? Creativedealmaker.com slash video, right? Yeah. I'll, I'll go, put it in there right now. Go do that. Watch it, watch the new video and, uh, Let's see, I'm gonna, let me download this here and I can start this thing, Google Slides. And I think you'll be able to see my screen here in a second. Give me one second. Yeah, put it in there, go watch it, man. Cause even if you've seen it before or you th see the three part video series, go back and watch this stuff because we're always making adjustments and we're always doing uh, um, things from the beginning. So let me see if I can- Yeah, yeah in the chat. Also put in there, how many of you guys are doing are, are doing creative financing? How many are you, are you guys are creating notes? How many of you guys are being the bank? Like put in the chat that, yes, I am. Um, or I want to learn more about it. Um, I mean, we also understand why we, Nick and I, it's just another tool in the toolbox for us. But for me, it's kind of the main toolbox. I, it's just, yeah. well, it's, once I set it, once I create it and I do it correctly and we do it correctly, it's kind of a set and forget. Yeah. And then you go off and do other things, you know? So good. So I want to get going. So I want to, I want to leave some time for the end sort of some Q and a stuff. Cause we got people, we talk about this all the time. You guys, when you have questions, you need to post them in the Facebook okay, group so we can respond and everybody benefits from the answer. And if we think okay. it needs more attention than that, then we'll bring it onto the call and we'll dive deep, di deeper dive into it. Or we'll do a little, you know, scenario on it or whatever the case may be. Can you guys see my screen right now, Eric? You say you see it? Hang on. I just can went you, off my screen. Yeah, I can see it. Yep. You see it? Okay, yep. cool. Yeah. So I'm going to run through this fairly quick. So I want to, I would just want to do a little recap. We got a ton of new people on the call. Okay. The people that are coming in, we have over 2,000 people in our private Facebook group. There's a lot of people that are watching this either on Facebook Live or Zoom that aren't even part of the community yet. So I want to just take literally 10 minutes. I'm going to go extremely fast through it. You guys, this is all available. If you don't have it, we'll get it to you. But I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about the, the model and the process. So, but I do have some new some new things I want to uh, point out as we go through to get to the, the meat of this, which is basically the note creation and the due diligence. So, you know, we talk about the, the process simplified, right? That really what you guys need to do is just find the property, analyze the deal, find the owner, finance buyer. That's it. All the stuff we're going to talk about here in a minute the underwriting, the buyer, the stacking of the collateral file, the creating of the mortgage note and the selling of the note and staying in the deal is what I want to spend the majority of the time today doing. Okay. Remember what we're trying to do here is be the bank, right? What does that mean? It means learn how to think, act, and be the bank. It's about control, not owning. You know, we're not going to get into why we do this. We've already talked about that before. Um, 
but yeah, you can go do this from anywhere in the world once you understand this model and you guys can do deal flow. There's the link again in the bottom of that screen, creativedealmaker.com slash video. Go watch it again, okay? Let's do this. Who is this for? for? We already talked about this. We're going to go right past this. Most of the people on this call are either node investors, node creators, landlords, or wholesalers, okay? That's yeah, it. Yeah, so so real quick, Nick, just, just so you guys know, we created this group for our node investors to come in with our real estate investors so we can all do deals together. And there's a lot of people out there that want to do a little of both. And then there's people, I will tell you, like my parents, they're in their 80s. They want a great return. They want security and they want to be backed by a loan and they don't want to deal with the stock market anymore. OK, so we're bringing everybody together so they have the opportunity. So go ahead. Sorry about that. No, that's cool. And you know, one thing that's not on here, but we're getting a lot of influx coming in. And I'm telling you, it's going to hit the fan in a, in a very short period of time. Realtors. We don't have realtors on this list specifically, but there's a tremendous opportunities for realtors to take advantage of the model in helping sellers sell properties with creative financing and still stay in the deal. We're not going to talk about this today. That's a whole nother, whole nother call. But if you're a realtor, you guys really need to be listening to this stuff as well. All right, let's go on. So we talk about the seller carryback note market. And this, I want to reiterate this again. A lot of new people on the call. I just got the new numbers from 2021. And it's, it's absolutely mind blowing. To be quite honest with you. That, that how big is the seller carry market? When I say that, how big is the seller market that are notes that are written by people like everybody on this call, you and me and other small cap lenders that aren't named Chase, Wells Fargo and Bank of America. And it's, $27 billion was what it was in 2021, $27 billion, man. And the number of the value of the property price point has gone up another fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. It's absolutely off the chain. And that's $123 billion in the last five years. Guys, if you don't see the opportunity here, I, don't, I can't make it any clearer than what that slide says right there. $27 billion. And that's not even talking about the economics of this. We're going to talk about that in a minute before we get into it and why this whole damn thing works, why I've been doing this for almost 13 years and a thousand plus notes and why I'm so bullish on it moving forward is because of these numbers and how the market conditions allow us to even be more profitable and do more deals with less effort than ever before, even in a ultra Uber seller market. Dude, it doesn't matter. And I'll show you here in a second. So let's go on. Oh, what happened here? Hit the wrong button. Oh, why is that not changing? Give me a second here. Oh, there it went. It was a little bit of delay. So I'm not going to talk about qualified mortgages and APR and RMLO, but guys, this is what we provide. This is what we do. This is what we teach for you guys to take advantage of it. You just need to know the who, not the how or the what I should say, right? The who is what we're teaching you, okay? Through the Creative Dealmaker Masterclass. So you follow the ingredients to the recipe, the recipe with all the ingredients in the proper order. But right? as rates get, but guess what? As rates go up, people are like, oh, what about inflation? Well, when rates go up, guess what we get to do? We get to charge more for our loans that we create, okay? It's really, really Absolutely. good. Absolutely, it's a, it's a moving target. So it doesn't really matter. So look guys, you gotta realize something. Everything that's going on in real estate right now is irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. Here's the reason why. Because I'm a buyer and a seller. You're a buyer and a seller. So if it's a seller's market, you're, you're on the better side of the fence than you are if you're a buyer. But guess what you have to do? You have to buy so you can sell, so you can buy, so you can sell. So you're on both sides of it anyway. So it really isn't that big of a deal if it's a buyer or seller's market. But one of the that. greatest things you guys, as you guys start learning how Nick and I think, Nick is very, very, very risk divert. He doesn't want risk, right? And that's why we that's why we do what we do. Because when this one loan is completed from start to finish, 45 to 60 days later, you have no more risk in regards to owing people money, managing the property. Ask me why I don't like risk, Eric. <laughs> I, 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 and, if, and if you don't ask me, I'm going to tell you anyway. Because, I'm a, because the majority of the people on this call the majority of them, I don't know the exact number, weren't doing deals in 2007 and before, okay? I was. I know. What happened in 2007 and 2008, 2009? What happened to, what well, happened? Can I tell you what happened to me? I, I had, my goal was 10 million in debt. 
Okay, so lots of leverage, 20 million in value, $10 million worth of equity, cash flowing, life was great, right? Well, then guess what happened? $20 million worth of value went to $5 million worth of value, and I had $10 million worth of debt and no cash flow. What was the demise of the, what was the demise? Hello. Of, what was the market demise? So if I had this model in place, guess how much debt I would have? And, and I'd still be cash flowing because I would just sit and wait, which I did. Well, I was very let's, blessed let's and fortunate. It the, way it, it, the, the true problem was that everything was over leveraged, way over leveraged. Yep. Over leverage is what caused the problem. It was the banks writing notes to anybody with a heartbeat and the fact that the buyers, the borrowers, were over leveraged. And, and, the, and, the, and the variable interest rate. So we're providing the perfect storm. Like over for leverage everyone was involved. the only thing that was the, was the, was the knife in the heart. Because right. you can have adjustable rate mortgages if you're at 40% leverage. Do you agree? Yeah. 100% yeah. you can. Yeah. But when you're over leveraged, you're playing with fire. And that's what this model teaches. Okay. I am not opposed to risk. Okay. What I'm trying to say is there's a way and a process to be no risk, no leverage. And that's what this does. It's what the Be the Bank Blueprint does. It gives you a foundation to go in and establish cash flow, cash now, cash flow, cash later, with little to no risk and little to no leverage. Can you make more money doing other things? 100%. But at the end of the day, we want to show the way to do it, build it the right way, in my opinion. And then you can go off and do whatever thing else you want to answer. For me personally, owner-occupied cash flowing assets to me is about as clean as it can get, especially if there's skin in the game on all parties. And that's, yeah. that's how we do what we do. All right, let's get rolling. So you don't need, you need to know what qualified mortgages and APR is. You don't need to know what, you don't need to know anything more than you should be looking at this kind of stuff when you're writing the note. Okay. Same with Dodd-Frank and Safe Deck. You can go read the 1800 page plus or whatever the hell it is. Knock yourself out. You don't need to know that. You just need to know who, to, who you need to use to do it to make sure you underwrite the documents correctly. And you, and that. you need, and, and this is the simple summarization of this is the borrower's ability to pay regardless of their credit. Okay. Yeah. And that's our, so, that's our avatar buyer. Same with an RMLO. You guys need to use an RMLO. If you're not using an RMLO, you're playing with fire. Doesn't mean you can't do one. Just not best business practices. You know, I, we built a whole seller financing company that we sold to a bank three or four years ago. Guess what we Perfect. did? This kind of stuff. So, and but we, we have we have some case studies on selling a loan that was underwritten with a qual with a RMLO versus not. And for us, we know for a fact if it's not underwritten by an RMLO, uh, there there's there's going to be a discount accordingly because we want to know that the borrower has the ability to pay, and that's what they do. That's what you pay them to do. The re the, the the cost versus the the money you're getting back is it, it blows it away. So going back to this, guys, the only thing you all, you need to understand the whole process from acquisition to disposition, okay? But the things that you really only need to be able to do yourself is no different than what you do already. Find a property, analyze the property, and find a buyer. The difference between finding a buyer, if you're a wholesaler, you're finding buyers, right, Eric? That's right. If you're a fix and flipper, you're finding a buyer, right? Yep. Okay. This model is finding a buyer too. It's just an owner finance buyer. You're just looking and fishing in a different pond for the client that you're looking for. That's and here's the, cool, the cool thing about what we do is we have all the people that find all the things for us. We already have it dialed in. Well, and we pay we talk about the pay numbers them here. Let's talk about the numbers here and why finding the owner finance buyer is probably the easiest buyer to find at the end of the day. Okay. All right, let's go here. There's a little slag, a little Especially, delay especially when when um the mortgage business kind of tightens up which it is which it is it's kind of it's tightening thinking, up so we want to focus on as is deal modeling okay we call them grandma house and i'll show up a couple pictures in a minute and why we want to do this okay and there's a lot of different reasons but these are the ideal properties that fit this model for a lot of different reasons okay so again three easy steps find the property analyze the deal find the owner finance buyer i mean i can't it's really that simple because once you get to that level, then it's just outsourcing and pushing it the rest of the process all the way to the end, okay? We talk about why this works, okay? And this is when seller financing comes up. We talked about that $25 billion or $27 billion seller created paper, okay? It comes from somewhere. This is just a screenshot. This is what we did in Nashville, Tennessee. 
And this is what I call the Zillow test. You guys can do this in, all, in any of your own markets. Highly suggest you do it. Go into Zillow, go look at all the properties for sale with no, with no filters, okay? And when I did this one, as you can see at the top here, 12, oops, sorry about that. Let me go back. 1,259 agent listings, 117 others. What's that? About 1,400 listings. Then we went into the filters and we searched, we changed the, the search fit field to say seller financing, owner financing, even lease option, okay? Something like that. And you put it in there and the number goes down. I think this number is a little bit off, but it's going to be five to 10% of all the availability pro available properties are available to seller financing. That's how negative or positively it's skewed in our favor in these opportunities. Okay. It's well, this is, the, this is what we talk about. I mean, this is about really all you need to know, <laughs> but then when you know how to do the one on the right, you are a trained, educated professional on terms and seller financing and how to exit out of them and how to provide value to the seller, all the, the buyers. If you understand this at a simple, you know, even at a high level, you will absolutely take over your market and, and provide a ton of opportunities um, uh, to buy more properties for people that don't think they can even sell their properties, right? Yeah, 100%. All right, I want to get to it. Okay, I want to get to the good stuff, but I want a couple of things. Quick tip number one for anybody, I've said this before on previous calls, podcasts, whatever. Go into your market and do when you are in the, where you're looking to buy a property and just go in and put ZHVI and your zip code, and it'll pull up something like this when you click on it, and it'll give you the median home price for that zip code for the property you're looking to buy, okay? So yeah, you go into, just go to Google and then in the search criteria, put ZHVI, which is just ZHVI. And then next to that, put the zip code and then it'll pop out and give you that, that the, the Zillow Home Value Index. And we'll explain why that's so important when you're selling these properties. Yeah, because here, this median home price for this zip code, $282,000. Here's what I love looking at, okay? And this is where a lot of people fail. They, they misread data. And the problem with the misreading of the data, they're looking at the past. There's a reason why when you're driving in a car, the windshield is really, really big and the rear view mirror is really, really tiny, okay? Because what's behind you is not nearly as important as what's ahead of you, okay? Period. That simple. It's why it's that way. So we want to look at the data, but we want to look and be a little bit more forward thinking and seeing where the trends and things are going. We don't want to be crazy about it. Here's the best part. Since we're in this grandma's house and we'll talk about that in the picture in a second, our window of our window that we're in and out of these deals is 30 to 45 days. The market is not going to shift extremely high or extremely low in 30 days. Would you agree? It's not, it's going to happen in time. It's going to go up. It could come down. It's highly unlikely it's going to go, you're going to have a 50% reduction in property values in a week. Not going, to, not going to happen, okay? Too many things preventing it from happening. But here's what I want you guys to see on this screen. 27.2% was the one-year change, okay? That's how much this value of this zip code went up in just one year, okay? You should be seeing stuff in the 15s, the 30%, pretty much any, anywhere you're looking at doing deals, should be at least a minimum of 15% on, on the Zillow index. If you're seeing stuff in the single digits, it's probably already starting to trend down and you may want to look at some other zip codes that may be a little bit better. All right, on the next screen. Quick tip number two, we talked about this, okay? This is when you're trying to assess the value. Um, what I want you to do is just divide the uh, value, that what the purchase price by 75% if it's above $180,000 value or by 72% if it's below. And here's the example. Purchase acquisition price was 129, no repairs, divided by 75. So we have to be able to finance this to an owner finance buyer for a minimum of 172. That's the line in the sand where we make cash now, cash flow, cash later. Now, I didn't say that that's the value of the property. I just said that's the minimum we would need to be able to sell it for if the value is there to support it. Okay. Gary, so if you guys, if you guys are on wholesale list, you're, you're looking through Zillow, you're looking for whatever you're looking, you know, however you get your deals or whatever list you're on to find homes to purchase. And they come through, you literally just 
you know, if it's 162,000 wholesale and divided by 0.75, that, that's the exit that you're going to need to Minimum do. Minimum exit. Right, guys. And if you guys go back there again, we get into really deep detail on this in that video. Go watch the video again and we'll show you the example and you'll see the actual case study in the model that we yeah. did that walks it through in much more detail. I'm really trying to go. We've already talked about this in the past. I really want to get to the, the, the underwriting piece of it because that's where the true value comes in. But yeah. guys, does this make sense? Does the, the, does the, the tips, tip one and tip two, throw it in the chat box. Let us know that this makes sense because if it doesn't, we can we can dive a little bit deeper on, the, on another call or in the Facebook or something like that. But these guys, you should be able to take between the, 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 the deal modeling, which you all have access to, and this right here, you should be able to do, you should be able to use this skill to be able to identify if this is a quote unquote owner finance property opportunity or not in a very short period of time. And if you done if you're taking more than literally three or four minutes to do it to do the initial analysis, you're probably doing it wrong. Okay, so go back and rewatch and, and go here, back. But sure. here's why it's so easy. It's easier to do and that we'll talk about that we don't maybe we're not I didn't mention it. We're not doing rehab. <laughs> so, yeah. so when you when you back into these numbers, we're not doing rehab. I will so I, I will tell you real quick, Nick, but I have a property in South Carolina that I listed in February on February 14th and I sold it within weeks. Okay. Actually, days. So the listing agent, I put we just listed it retail on the market as a seller finance deal. That property, okay, this was February 14th. It has 90,000 views, okay with uh, listing detail views, 20, almost 2,500 listing. Like, it's un, like when you, when you have the asset, the opportunities will come. And so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, that one asset, I just talked to my realtor today, I have three more properties to buy because he already has three more people lined up with seller, with, with large down payments. So now I just have to back in and go find the properties. So think about that. Think about yeah. when you have the back and buyer lined up and you go plug these numbers in, it's it's game over, right? Yeah. So let's so let's go to the next thing. So um, here's Grandma's house. Okay. Look, a fix and flipper would come in and probably say, "Hey, there's popcorn on the ceiling, or this brown painted paneling needs to be repaired." Look, all we want to do is make is provide. We can sell these houses as is, all day long. If somebody was living in it, we can clean them up. This is a better example of some. But there's other examples that we have where we still are able to sell them on, on seller financing. Okay. This is just, it's a perfectly cleaned house. Once it's been cleaned out, this literally was grandma's house. Move grandma out, put her in the facility. We clean it up. And this is exactly what it was. Okay. These houses are everywhere. It can everywhere. be grandpa's house too. It doesn't have to be grandma. We were at a meeting yesterday, the other day, and they're like, what about grandpa? I'm like, yep, it's the same model. We just use grandma. Grandpa probably got tired of dealing with grandma <laughs> 10 years before earlier. And he said, I'm no, out Nick, Nick's like, he goes, well, am, grandma, Nick's grandpa was a smarter one. He said, I am checking out. Grandma. Oh, was that, that was in our present. Nick goes, well, most of the time the, the, the grandpa dies before grandma. That's why we use grandma's house. I'm like, whatever. That's that's what the statistics say. So <laughs> here we go. All right. So let's talk about, and this thing's moving a little too quick for me. Give me one. Let me move this out of the way. So the math, okay why this all works okay and i'm going to go to the next this thing is just not popping. these are the top seller financing states okay i just want to visually show this we talked about that 27 billion dollar opportunity here it is right here you can see all where all the main markets are for seller financing it's mainly in the south why is it in the south eric what do you mean what why what? why is there more opportunity in the south of the united states than up in the in the Midwest or the North? Well, it, border, it borders uh, an, another country, maybe. Oh, no, it's not that because people want to live in the South. They don't lose, <laughs> they don't move from Texas to freaking North Dakota. That's right. All right. They don't leave, they don't move, they don't, they, they migrate South. Okay. That's where all the opportunity is. Okay. So, but here's the best part about it I don't care if you live in North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, you can still do deals anywhere. I and mean, I just did one in South Carolina. It was fantastic. Yeah. And South Carolina is not even in the top 10 state here. Nope. Okay. Doesn't uh, mean there's not opportunity. Doesn't mean you can't do them there, but you know, it's a supply and demand thing, right? So there again, that's it. But you can see where all that is. So 
why do node investors why do investors use our node creation program well when we what we're getting ready to get into when you go to sell these notes okay or we're a buyer for the note and we have we're a a big dis disposition arm to a lot of funds and stuff that want high quality notes to further portfolio. A lot of people don't realize this, Eric, but almost every fortune 100 company owns notes in their investment portfolio. Well, why, the reason people came to us and, and, and is because the way we create our paper is so clean. They don't, there's nothing for them to do other than because they already know how it's written. It's the same. It doesn't change. And so that's what, why we're, why we're teaching people how to do this is because if you follow the protocols, you're going to have the best scenario on how to exit it out. And most likely we're that guy, we're that, we're that buyer. We'll, we'll buy the note, you know? Yeah. Cause that $27 billion a year of paper that's written by people like that are on this call, 95% of it is not written correctly, which doesn't produce the returns that are on the screen right here. If you guys right. follow the protocol and you really see the value in this opportunity and you want to generate the back end side of it, if you follow this, I will tell you right now, your chances of getting eight to 10% more than the national average is highly, highly probable. That doesn't sound like it's that much, but we're talking about off the gross, okay? So if you write a million dollars in notes, okay, let's just say for sake of argument, that's $150,000 of the average value. What is that, eight deals a year? You write eight deals a year the right way. Remember, we're not fixing and flipping these. You're not fixing these. You're just sort of flipping them. Seven, if you do that, seven deals. That's it. Seven deals. So if you do it correctly, it's going to make you an additional $80,000 to the bottom line. Now, there's a cost with all this. This is not free. You got to yeah, have time. But Nick, if you didn't, okay, so let's say you're on the call, you're a real estate agent, fix and flip or hold, whatever, and you're actively flipping houses and you didn't have to fix and flip. <laughs> How many more deals could you do? Well, I tell you what I can do. You I put can more do energy it. finding great buyers to put in these homes that deserve home ownership. I know I can be on, doing. I can be in, I can be in Spain or Portugal or on the moon doing these <laughs> deals because I don't have to worry are about you, doing Are that. you, uh, are you going on the space launch with the, uh, no. no, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin I Galactic? Look, I don't look good in a helmet. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I, look like a, I look like a chimp like a chimp in space with a helmet on. Anyway, so look, what I want to talk about, what we're going to talk about for the next 15 minutes at a very, very high level is the underwriting of the file, the stacking of the, of the collateral, the underwriting of the buyer, the stacking of the collateral file, the creating of the mortgage note and the be able to sell the mortgage note and stay in the deal back in. This so like, is basically when you fix and flip a house and you go with granite countertops and new hardwood floors and new fixtures and new texture and you, you take the popcorn ceilings off, okay? And you make it nice and fresh and clean for that buyer to come in and buy that house at full retail. What we're telling, teaching you here is that for notes. That's, that's, the, that's the exit. And it's but just, that said, but that to that point, if we went back to those pictures, I don't know if there's any appraisers in here. If you're an appraiser, put it, chime in on the chat. Do you do, if I go take popcorn ceiling off the uh, popcorn off the ceiling and retexture and paint it, does that increase my value of my, per, of my property? So if you take the popcorn off and, uh, and take the paneling it. off and then retextured, are you going to get new, a new appraiser? paint? Does new paint on the walls give me more value for that property? From an appraiser standpoint, no. Okay, I'm not asking you. You're not the appraiser. I'm asking for a trained oh. professional that spent a lot of money to go to appraiser school and give me the answer to this. I want to put, want to put it in the chat, okay, or any of that stuff. Hey, Corey, right? Corey's an appraiser. He'll he'll answer. All right, yeah. answer those questions. So <laughs> I'm going to go back here real quick to these pictures. Corey, <laughs> chime in. Do I get any? Do I get any deductions or benefit if my ceilings are have have a uh, popcorn on them or not? Do I get any benefit or, or, or decrease if I have brass fixtures in my, in my. Uh, how about house? a stainless, stainless steel appliances versus the black. Uh, if, if a new appliance package costs me $5,000, $3,000, pick a number and they're stainless versus black. Do I get a, do I get a dollar for dollar benefit on the value of that property? Just curious. Does, in this do market, I, no. In this market, absolutely not. Okay. Oh, by the way, you got to go find somebody to do the work and hopefully the, 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 the appliances are in stock. Anybody doing a fix and flip right now and have any issue with materials? I'm not. 
I have zero issue with my materials on my fix and flip. Do you know why? I don't fix and flip. Why? Hey, why are, why are you yelling at me? I'm not yelling at you. I mean, I don't like Corey and everybody else that's sleeping <laughs> over there. It's, that's it's simple. Chris and, you know, everyone. No, you don't need it. So, But here's what I'll tell you guys. Well, I went back to this picture and I'll go ahead. I can promise you this toilet flushes just like a brand new toilet. I think Corey I will take, you. he'll take, he'll take money out for having a ceiling fan in the bathroom. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. No that's an upgrade. Here. That's an up, that's an upgrade in my houses, by the way. <laughs> Do I get credit for the upgrade. I know builders put upgrades. The shower is going to still pump out hot water when you jump in it, whether it's got brand new custom tile in it, or if it's, that looks like this. Okay. It all still works the same. So that's, you guys got to start thinking a little bit differently. Okay. If you want to take advantage of these opportunities. So let's go on to this. Underwrite, stack, create, and sell. Okay. Underwriting the buyer. I'm not going to get into the details. What you guys got to understand is all this stuff is done for you or can be done for you. I would highly, highly recommend you don't go try to underwrite a buyer. Okay. There's paid trained professionals. That's what title companies and, get paid to do. That's what and, our, do. and our buyers, guess what? They pay for all this. We don't pay for anything. We're the lender. When was the last time the lender paid for you to do anything? Never. Right. Yeah. Good luck with that. So, but you, but there's, there's, so here's what the party, what, what the team looks like. Okay. You have title companies. What do title companies do? They, they, they're the, the escrow agent and they close the transaction. Most people have worked with a title company before, either as a wholesaler, as a realtor, as a fix and flipper, buy and holder, lender, whatever. Okay. Who else is involved? There's the RMLO, which is the mortgage loan originator that represents us as the seller and the lender to make sure the buyer qualifies. Okay. Thought, fills out all the paperwork, does all the, the, the application and all the disclosures and all that stuff. Who else is involved? The servicers involved, right? What does the servicer do? The servicer is the one the buyer makes the payments to and then takes the payment in and then disperses the funds out accordingly to whatever it is. It goes to, you know, the first lien holder, the second lien holder, escrows and taxes. Again, another thing you don't need to worry about or know what it is. You just need to know that they, they're there and you need to make sure that you service your notes. Okay. That they're, they're, they're all this team, the attorneys that are writing the promissory notes and putting the right verbiage in, it's already done for you either through them directly or through, a, you know, an infrastructure that and, already exists. And every, and every, so like, right. so like when we're in Texas, cause we buy a lot in Texas, we create notes in Texas. We have every system and team in place in that market. And so we, but every market's a little bit different. But they their banks lend in every market, so they're, the solution and the answers to all these things to get done for you is all there. Okay. Yeah, that's all I want to make sure that we talk about. So all these things you see is it a qualified mortgage? Is it a conforming loan? Is is it are you violating usury rates? Okay. You know, did you follow the Safe Act and Dodd Frank and you know all this stuff? Right? Did you do the purchase agreement right? Was all that stuff done? correctly i'm not saying you're going to make you're going to do something illegal what i'm telling you is that all of this stuff has tremendous impact on the value of the note that you're writing okay i talk about this all the time i still call it my f-150 you know pickup truck example right mortgage notes are very you can i have this very same uh, analogy as a, as a note what i mean by that is you could have two identical 2015 Ford F-150, 2015 Ford F-150 pickup trucks. They're both white with tan interior, both with 50,000 miles. But the difference is one has been meticulously been taken care of. The tires are rotated. The oil has been changed. The service records are impeccable. There's not a scratch on it. There's not a blemish on the interior. And the other one is beat to shit. There's no maintenance records. The tires are bald. There's kids got to crap all in the back seat. The, 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 it's, it's got, it's been in three wrecks, you know, and the front bumpers falling off, et cetera. Which one of those two 2015 white Ford F-150s is worth more money? The one that's in the best condition, which if you're going to buy one of those two, regardless if the price is better 
on the one that's beat up, which one do you think is going to perform better for you going into the future, right? Which one is going to be more reliable? Notes are no difference. And that's what note buyers look at. It's what we look at when we go to buy notes. So when you follow all this, this due diligence piece of it, and you stack that file correctly so that a note buyer can come in with, man, look, we're writing 15, 20, 30 year mortgage notes, okay? We're taking a snapshot today and looking at that buyer's profile and the file that we create and say, uh, is this buyer gonna perform for a long period of time? And I will tell you with a high degree of probability, if you do what we say to do, the answer is yes. And as a result of that, a note buyer sees that value in the stack file that we're talking about here, and they're going to pay more. Hence the, the numbers there. So we're going to get to some questions here in a second. Stacking the buyer file file just means putting all the proper documents in a nice stack file. Anybody that's ever gone into a bank to buy a car, to get a car loan or to do a home loan or any kind of anything, they ask for a bunch of stuff and they stack a file. That's what it's called, stacking the file. And all that stuff gets into it. And then you evaluate the, the information that's in there. Okay. So creating the mortgage notes, this is probably where the biggest, one of the biggest things people fail on is they don't follow correct. What I would say best business practices when, when creating the mortgage note, the verbiage they use, how they, how, what they, what they say, how they, how they keep track of all this stuff, all very, very important because note buyers are looking at this stuff in the event of a default, right? It's all fine and dandy until there's, until it's not fine and dandy anymore. And when there's a, when a, when a buyer goes into a fault situation, you need to make sure that the file is correctly stacked. So that's what that means as well. Again, things that you don't have to physically do yourself, but you need to make sure that it's done correctly. And what we're trying to show you and teach you, whether you're doing deals in Texas or anywhere else in the United States, there is a system and a process for you guys to implement and follow to make it the best possible note you, that you can for what you ever you're uh, selling. So selling a note, we just talked about this. Um, these are the reasons why the note values are so, are so uh, desirable, why Fortune 100 companies buy notes. You know, we want to keep them performing, okay? We talked about the Ford F-150 example already, why a performing note is much more valuable than non-performing. Here's the difference. It's like a rehab. A performing note is no rehab. A non-performing is a, is a gut job, okay? Which do you want to deal with? If you're a note holder, right? You got to think. When I say note holder, I'm saying be the bank, right? Because the bank is the note holder. That's what we're talking about here. Thank hey, you. Real, real quick for some of the people on this call, okay, put in the chat as we ask this all the time. And if you, you know, raise your hand, put in the chat. How many of you have a mortgage, okay? Or ever have had a mortgage? And when was the last time you called the lender for anything? Just put it in there because we know the answer. <laughs> it's very, it, it never. Not very often. Yeah, like just put in there. When was the last time you called them? And then if you're a landlord, how many times are your property manager or how many times as your if you self-manage, how many times are your tenants called you and have for, for anything? It just, it's, it's overwhelming. So yeah. it's time value. It's your, it's your, it's your value of time on when you do this, right? <laughs> so we're almost done here and then we'll get into some Q and A. Like if you got a question specific to something we talked about, raise your hand and we'll go through those and we'll also go through the chat as well. Um, hey, what's that all about? Are you drawing on my screen? Who's no, drawing I'm on my screen? I'm not. <laughs> is someone drawn on? Oh yeah, there is some drawing on there. I don't know. Is that me? I don't, know. Oop, I, don't know. Oop, I don't know what the hell that was. Let me go back. So why do these know? Why does this matter? Okay. Why do you, why do we tell you and, and harp on you guys? If you're going to do this to do it the right way, it's because when the no, you guys are staying in the deal in the second lien position, that's the cash flow portion of it, right? In the first lien and the second lien. If you don't know what I'm talking about, a lot of people might go, what the hell is Nick and Eric talking about? Go back, go to creativedealmaker.com slash video, watch the hour video where we break down exactly what we're talking about here, okay? You literally can go, watching that video, you can literally go and do this business. It just, it opens up your eyes, but it goes back to what we talked about. If you got on the call late, if you go into uh, the, you know, listed pro properties listed for sale versus listed for sale and seller financing, yeah. as you guys know, that's a supply and demand deal. 
That's so, it. So, um, but you guys are staying when we write when we create these notes. Remember, we write the first and the second. We sell the first, pay off the debt, stay in the deal for cash flow. That's the that's the cash flow portion of it. Tremendous value, tremendous value. When the first note buyer, whether it be us or somebody else, buys that note, and you are tied to the performance of that deal being the second second lean position, because they know that you're still in the deal. So yeah, it's that like was a question. That was a question in there. It, do we? So we create a first, we buy it for cash or hard money, we sell it, we create a first and second, we sell the first to pay off the underlying debt, and we keep a free and clear second between 25 and 50,000 or above in second lien position at 10 and a half percent. That's what the market's bearing right now in today's market. Yeah. So the other, the other, so how many, me, how many of those do you need to pay your bills? Right. I don't know. Put in a calculator. I know if you do 30 of them a year at 28,000, 30,000. Well, we, we had another question that I, that popped up in Hang there. On, let me, let's get to the question in a second. Let me finish. I got one more slide and we'll get in okay. there. The other value, the reason why we do this strategy and this model and why you guys are going to understand this is that when we write that first lien, we're writing it at 75% less, 75% or, or less of the value of the property. For example, if it's a $200,000 sales price, we're writing that first lien at $150,000 or less. So when we go to sell that note or buy that note, whoever is acquiring it, their risk is mitigated substantially by only having exposure at 75%, even though the asset or the property is worth much, much more, okay? So in the event of a default, they have the ability to protect their investment. That's why we command and demand a higher price for the notes. So if you guys haven't heard this, because there's a lot of new people on the call, Nick, I call it the $6 million mistake. And so Nick, instead of creating a first and second, uh, and I did the same thing, he created a first and sold the first, created income, cash, right? But no cash flow. So then we, re we recreated this and created a first at 75% loan to value or better, okay? And sold that note and kept the second. So it, think about doing 500 of these deals the wrong way and your average second lien is uh is um is 30 grand right so it can be. i mean it can be yeah so so that's what happened right that's what happened so that was like i, I well shit that's 15 million it was a big number and i called the six million dollar mistake because well, is that, i only had i only had half the company so it wasn't oh it yeah was, i guess like, it was about i only right. lost half as much as we could have made yeah so, yeah. so my partner lost the other half <laughs> <laughs> no, anyway. but now, but now, and, this, and that was back in the market was, isn't anywhere near how great it is today with the opportunity. So it, seller financing, having buyers that are not going to go and down to get a traditional bank loan, that market is going to absolutely explode. That's why it's so important to learn this stuff. Even if, even if you just did one deal or helped a family member uh, exit out of their primary residence, but stayed in the deal in the back end for cash flow to pay their damn uh, um, supplemental insurance on their on their for their yeah. uh, retirement. And, and the, the opportunities are endless, man. So, guys, if you don't, because we have a lot of people that aren't in the private Facebook group that are watching this on Zoom. Uh, if you if you're not a member, if you scan this code, you'll get access to everything that we were talking about. You get the deal analyzer. You'll get the video link to go watch it. You'll get the link to join the private Facebook mm. group. Yeah. If you're missing the $4.7 trillion seeker or just any of the other stuff that we have, go in and do that. You should have you should get emails when you when you when you register to get all this stuff. But just in case you don't have it, just do it again and go and go from there. So but this is but this is the other thing. When you guys join the group, like keep in mind, we're bringing people in that are no people as well as real estate and people are bringing everyone together to make money. And um, like treat our Facebook group as a game, gamify this stuff, go in and put deals in there and say, Hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I think. What would you guys do? So Nick and I can, can answer it because we get, we have people like direct message us. Okay. And um, with deals. And I'm like, if you don't put it in the group, how is the group supposed to learn? Right. We're, we're, shit. We have 150 people or more on this call right now that are either on Facebook or some of our other platforms as well as zoom 
that are interested in this because it's it's freaking awesome. <laughs> That's right. So real quick, so we had someone in the group asked, well, how are you guys to protect yourself from a market correction if you're selling the properties for more than market value? Who said so, we're selling them for more than market value? Who said well, that? No, I, that, well, I'm going to answer that. Here's okay. the deal. We're wholesale buyers. We're buying stuff at wholesale prices, right? And so we're buying at wholesale, selling at retail. So retail, we're not selling, you know, you're taught. There's a lot of gurus out there and people that teach, go buy a house, put a lease option and increase the property by 30%. And hope that buyer uh, pays you off. Well, how many people have lease options right now? Well, in the past, there was a huge appreciation. I, I own a few myself. But my, my point is, we buy wholesale, sell retail. We're not selling these houses for more than market value. Because guess why? We have the ability to buy wholesale and pass that on to a buyer. Our buyers are putting 10 to 15% down on these properties, okay? So by them putting 10 to 15% down on these properties, guess what they have? They have equity. And then the best part, if you guys go watch our little video, they go and add a lot of these people add value. So Nick, like one of his niches when, 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 uh, I mean, Nick and I, just by the way, Nick and I've known each other for a long time. We were in a mastermind together 10 or 15 years ago. And that's how we met. And then we were doing the same deals and we're like, dude, let's, let's share some of our knowledge with the, with the group. And that's why we created this. But, but what I was going to say is you go buy a two bedroom, one bath, our borrowers will go buy this two bedroom, one bath. Okay. And then literally three months later, you go drive that property. Now it's a three, two, because they converted the garage into a bedroom for mom, mom and dad to move into and added a bath for them. And now they just, now your loan to value went down dramatically or your risk went down dramatically. And that's why do, not doing full blown rehabs on these is so cool. That's why we like the grandma houses or grandpa houses, however you want to say it, because they're going to go add value to these properties and, and, and lower your risk, especially for your note buyer, Right. Yeah, but the bottom line is you don't need to do it. There's no, there, there's no other reason to do a rehab unless you think you need to do a rehab. That's all. So, I'll say that. so we had another question in here. I'm just going to go from the bottom up and work our way up. So someone said, uh, do you buy? Do buyers mind sending check, checks and payments to two different servicing companies? So so what, the way we do it is we have one. We this goes back going through the program, setting this up correctly. We have one. We send one payment letter. They send the payment one payment and then they disperse it accordingly to how the servicing, uh, the service agreement is written. That's how we do it in Texas. There's other markets. We use different uh, servicing companies, different in different markets, but that's-, yeah. that's there the, is no, the There's only part. one payment. There's not, even though there's two different, there's, all, there's one servicer, one payment, two mortgages, first and second. Yeah, payment, yeah, okay? yeah. What is the best way to find owner finance buyers in any market? Uh, they're everywhere. How would you find a regular buyer? Uh, my, my, my niche, because I have money, I just buy a damn house and throw it on the market and you get a flood of people. I just showed you. Put a you sign in the yard. You can put a sign in the yard. You can contact the realtor. There again, we talk about that in that video on how we do it. Um, uh, have you gotten deals straight from MLS? Yeah, we got deals from, uh, uh, from realtors. Absolutely. They're a little bit trickier though from MLS. And here's the reason why. Because... If they posted it on MLS, it probably went to Zillow, okay? It probably shows up in Zillow. And when people, I mean, not that I'm a fan, uh, 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 I agree or disagree with Zillow. I'm pretty agnostic when it comes to Zillow, but a lot of people use Zillow, right? So if you have a property that was listed on Zillow and you bought it for 100 and then you turn around and you're selling it for 160, people go, well, what'd you, the pictures are the same. Well, I know, but I'm just... Uh, you know, you have to have a discussion. Sometimes you got to explain what you're doing or whatever that might look like. So it's a little bit harder, but doesn't. here's the bottom line, okay? It's really this simple. 65% of the population today cannot get a traditional mortgage, okay? That means out of 100 people that are on this call right now, 65 of you guys cannot go down to Chase Wells Fargo and get a mortgage, me being one of them, Okay. So if you can't go to get a loan to buy a property, where do you go to if you want to buy? You have to go to somebody that's going to carry, period. That's simple. So otherwise, you got to be a renter. Well, I, I know there's another thing I know. 80% of renters rent because they have to, not because they want to. Okay? All these apartment buildings are being built and, and people, and, and here's the best part. This is a, such a huge value that we get to create to the market is, and, and keep in mind, we have cash flow notes with single family homes and then we go buy other assets for our tax benefits 
with apartments and commercial property stuff like that. So people ask about the tax the tax benefits of notes versus not, you know. So um, what, what I what so I'm so saying, got to, I'm going to unmute Luke real quick because he's got his hand raised. He's had it up yeah. for a while. Yeah. Luke, go ahead and unmute. Ask your question and tell me what you got. Yeah. Um. You guys can hear me, right? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Hey, so yeah, I've got a question about, I've got a guy who's trying to purchase a home. He only got, he got qualified through a traditional bank for about 125,000, but the house he's wanting to buy is about 225,000. So he's a whole hundred K short. So my question for you guys is for a tenant buyer like that, could I threw, I threw it in the model. So I'm a sub two student and I'm one of your guys' students. I threw it in the model okay. and there's just no way you can make money on that for a, because the home he's buying is a, a new construction home. So it's brand new. Um, is there any way that we could help a tenant buyer like that? Or How much money does really? he have? How much cash does he have to put down? Um, I don't know that off the top of my head. I would and assume. That's going to be the first question. We're going to, he's going to need okay. at least 10% down. But here's where the first red flag that goes up for me is. If that's all he qualified for with the bank, why mm -hmm. do we think that we would want to lend him more than what a bank would lend? Because yeah, you still you still have to have the financial capacity to make the payment. Okay. That's Correct. the number one thing on this. Credit score, not that big of a deal. Okay. Down payment, bigger deal. Okay. Ability to afford to make the payment, bigger, bigger deal. The actual assets are pretty big deal too. Because people have low credit scores for a lot of different reasons. They, you know, if you get above 30% utilization, and I'm not going to get into a credit discussion right now, and I'm not a credit expert, but if you get above 30 or 40% of your utilization ability on your credit, it hammers your credit score. And you can be making payments early, and it doesn't matter. It's the algorithms and analytics they use to determine all this, period. So, you know, you could have had medical, you could have had medical issues, and you made, you made, you made payments with your credit cards on, for medical and weren't able to make the payment because you needed to get your, your leg fixed or your, you know, whatever, you know, it just, there's different reasons, but the, those are the, the questions that I would typically want to know. That's why we send them to the underwriter and see, but if they got a 10% down and verifiable yeah. income, they're probably a lot of times going to be able to get qualified but the banks Got are tight, man. The banks might say, and their payment has to fit. Right. They have to be able to support that payment. And obviously, so this is the other thing that, uh, so, sorry to interrupt, but one of the things that comes to my mind is, is when we're selling, how, we're selling houses at 10% interest, guys. Like, but what you have to understand is the people that are paying 10% interest are probably paying equal to or less than what their rent is, is now or will be in the future. And so people are willing to pay a premium in order to have security and certainty, okay? For their right. They can go refinance at any time they want, man. 100%. They can go refinance any time. I, I just had this conversation with, the, with um, I don't even know how I got on the call, but I did. And I got on the phone with the realtor and they, she goes, oh, I'm, with your I'm with the client right now. We're at the house. And they go, What's, what are the seller finance terms? And I go, it's 10% down and 9.95% 9 9 interest. And the guy goes, 9.95, I ain't paying that. I'll pay six. I go, well, last time I checked, I think you can go to Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America. I think they're actually better than six. I think they're like more like five. Have you checked them out lately? And he shut up. Why did he shut up? Because he can't go to Chase, Wells Fargo, uh, Bank of America. So, so said, here's your two options. You can, either, if you want this property, you can buy it. And here's what it's going to be. Or you can continue to be a renter. I don't care either way. You have to decide for you and your family what's the best for you. So, so what, 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 what's the, and then we always talk about this. I mean, we're, we're not, we're not charging people double what rent would be. We're not, we're not hard money lenders. Okay. We're able to buy a house at a discount and sell it retail and make some income. Okay. We can arbitrage it. Right. But we always tell people when we talk to realtors, realtors are hard, hard to work with sometimes, but once they understand what we talk about and we get them in town, they're like, Oh, I got it. I got it. But what is the interest rate on rent? What is it? There is no interest rate because you're you're not you don't have any ownership. You're not paying down anything. You don't own it. You don't get the tax benefits. You don't get guys. This all. is not. I'm telling you right now. The numbers are so skewed in our favor. If you have anybody that says it, just you can just pass. Because like here was who was it? Peter said, 84 year old balking at seller five because he's 84 and doesn't want to see any benefit giving him his limited term. That's true. Well, you know what? There's nothing that says that you can't structure this for six months or a year. 
who says you got to go 30 years on this stuff, right? Let, let me tell you what I did. I had a deal that was going to go two years, right? And so I wrote the note. I knew because I already, I already had my note buyer lined up. So I just, I got, I got the, the terms that I wanted on, from the seller um, and they wanted a two-year balloon. And so I did buy buyer, I borrowed short, lent long, but I had the exit in place, okay? But what happened was we got close to that term and I said, how do you like that monthly cash flow you're making? Do you want to extend or do you want me to pay you off? And they're like, well, you have been paying really well. And I do, it covers my, 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 uh, my insurance, my supplemental insurance and my cell phone bill or whatever that you're paying every month. And I literally do nothing. And I said, that's right. So they'll just, they just extend. So you can always go back and renegotiate, but I always set it up for the exit in mind. And that's what someone said. There was a probate dealer we're talking about in here. We always create a first and second for the exit. When you create a first, your exit is a pretty substantial discount. So why that's why we do the first and second. And if you create a first and second and, and you want to arbitrage for a while and that thing cash flows like crazy and it's performing, guess what you're going to get? You'll probably get more money for that first when you do sell it. So it gives you so many exits on it, right? Yeah, we got to be, we don't want to talk, get into too much of the weeds on that because that's not what we're teaching right now. It's just a strategy you can do, but we're not mm -hmm. going to promote it or, you know, discuss it really inside this group because this is really about cash now, cash flow, cash later, zero to zero to no risk. And, but there's mastermind groups that we have and advanced strategies that if you're, if that's something you're truly interested in doing, reach out to us. Um, and we'd happy to set up a, a call and discuss it, but this is probably not the, the forum. Yeah, this, so. this specific course, or this specific conversation for these calls is very simple. Buy it with hard money or cash, little, no money out of your pocket, sell it on terms, create a first and second, pay off the first, keep the second get 10,000 cash up front in a 20 to $30,000 second and do it over and over and over again. And that's what Nick says. He goes, if you don't have any cost in any deals, how many deals would you, would you be able to do? Right. A lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot more than if you had cash in them. Hey, last question. We're running a few minutes late and we got to get on another call. Uh, so Gary says, so on the, the scenario where the buyer was qualified for a smaller amount, what model could there be? for a profitable deal if the buyer had qualif unqualified but stable income? Well, I'm not sure I quite understand the question, but we're going to underwrite the buyer no differently than Chase, Wells Fargo, or Bank America is. The difference between us and them is that we just consider credit score. We just we look at their DTI, their debt to income ratio. We don't care necessarily if they're a W-2 employee that works for free to lay. They could be self-employed with an, uh, with an individual tax ID number instead of a social security number and have a landscaping business, for example, okay? We just care that they have the financial capacity to make that monthly payment, period. And then we underwrite the rest. And, and, goes, back, and goes back to our, and, our and, and no buyer. That's what they want. <laughs> that's what they want. And that's why it's so important when you're exiting out of these things. Yeah, so last one, because uh, Raphael said, can a buyer have no social or an ITIN number? Well, it's going to have to go to underwriting, but somebody usually has one or the other. I mean, otherwise, we, otherwise, how do you verify who they say they are, right? That's, yeah. that's the we, we sell a lot of houses with borrowers with ITIN numbers, and they're fantastic. And here's why they're so fantastic is because they, they, they love pride of home ownership. They've been tenants. How many people have we sold houses to that were tenants, lifelong tenants three weeks ago? And now they're homeowners. Okay, so they're going to take pride of ownership. They're going to do it. They they're going to have. You know, they're going to own a home. They're going to be an owner. Okay, and uh, they they just pay. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, so, thanks again for the time. Thanks to everybody hanging out. Hope this was value to you guys. We'll have the replay also. That we went through a lot of stuff. Uh, we'll send out an email uh, probably tomorrow with the replay link if you want to go back and watch it. Uh, we'll also post the replay link inside the, uh, the Facebook group uh, once it becomes available. And please, please, please go, just go to Facebook, go to Creative Dealmaker and, and get in our group because there's a lot of people that get on our calls that aren't even in the in Facebook group. And that's where all the activity, that's all the fun happens. And then start putting your deals in there, all these questions, put them in there and then we'll use them. Um, either we'll post in Facebook and answer them or we'll just get on a call like this and do like a high level um, uh, deal. Um, also, someone asked about taxes. 
Um, we'll put in our, we have a whole nother call that we did with um, Prime Corporate Services. That was amazing, by the way. Um, we'll probably send that out again. We'll send that out in the group uh, be, or, or we'll do yeah, a let's replay. Put it, we'll, send it, we'll do a follow-up email this week. Uh, yeah. um, so you guys have it and then there'll be a link in there. So if you want to go, remember they book, they, they're giving, they're giving our group a free strategy call. Oh yeah, they're doing a free consultation for anyone yeah, that goes doing, that signs up. With all them. Be doing that. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a prime corporate services slash uh, CDM. Is, it, is it CDM? Is that the yeah. Here, let me put that in the chat real quick. Hang on. Yeah, CDM. Guys, go do that. We talked about this two weeks ago or whenever it was when we had them on about how to, how installment sales work, how the, the taxation works on all this stuff. So, and I know it's tough because when people come in at different points in time and they hear some stuff, they don't see some stuff. So we're starting to do a sort of a, a regurgitation of some of these things. If you already heard it, it doesn't hurt to hear it two or three or four but more times. But you need to keep hearing it over and over again because when you see deals come in and you plug in the numbers, you're like, boom, that's a deal. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, we got to run. Thanks for your time. We'll see you guys next week. Let us know if we can help. Have a good All one. Right. Take care. Later. Thanks for getting on. Later. Bye. Thanks, guys.